Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 6 of Direwolf20's server play. Flora Star came to visit me in my age. She wanted to bring me a present. What'd you bring me, Flora? I brought you a mailbox. Woot! And hey, your microphone's working too, isn't it? Yeah. It just started working. I don't know, it's still the broken one. But it started working, so yay! Yay. I think I'm going to place my mailbox right there. Oh, you're right, it does look kind of nice on a fence post. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't like it touching my house, though. I want it, like, a little bit further away. Yeah. So that the fence doesn't connect? Yeah. I'm picky like that. Oh, yeah, but there's a lot of things easy here. To use. They're pretty easy to use, and any mail that anyone sends you will end up here. Cool. And my owner is Direwolf20. Access shared, restricted, private. Haha. <laughs> private it is. So you guys can't access it. So if you try and open it now, you can't open it, right? Nope. It says Direwolf20 is the owner of this machine and has locked access. Oop, I found a bug. I found a bug. The space. Yeah, I saw, I saw that bug. Yeah. Well, I knew I Tog would see it. Though. <laughs> well, no, basically, um, there's no space between the owner's name and is. Yeah. That's surprisingly easy to do in programming. Like... I think it's like one of the most common bugs is to forget to put a space after a variable. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't believe how many times I've done that. You do string concatenation between the string and the variable, and you forget a space. You yeah. So, uh, Direwolf, you know you have a forest beehive, like, right there? Yes, I do. There's a lot of beehives, actually, in this uh, area. Yeah, that's the good thing about Mistcraft. Unlimited beehives. You need more beehives? Just make a new world. Get more beehives. Yeah, and what's funny is some people say Mistcraft is overpowered because of that, and I'm like, or you could just explore the overworld. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to use Mistcraft. But yeah, Mistcraft like does make it you a little bit more easier. It. I'm just taking care of some rubber. I need to get a chunk loader out here, too, so that my rubber trees regenerate both when I'm offline and not in the age. I'm assuming that chunk loaders would cause that. Well, I've noticed, like, in my world, I've had a lot of rubber trees grow when I'm not online. Really? That sapling yeah. has been sitting there since episode two. All right, maybe three. I forget. All right, well, I'm heading Whenever back to the that. garden, so I'll see, see you later. What do you got over in your world, by the way? You built much yet? Um, I have a decently sized house. If you want, you can come over and visit. All right, yeah, let's go see Flora's world real quick. It's a pretty empty house, but I, I think it's decent. Cool. All right, where is uh, your world? Bots Desert, bunch of bot stuff. Pipes, Flora's Garden, cool. What's up, Pahamar? Hey. Ooh, Flora, look Hey, Pahamar. All fancy what? and stuff? I know. Do you like my 9 by 9s <laughs> They're beautiful. They're just way fancier than mine usually are. <laughs> I, I didn't want to mix wood, but I ended up kind of liking it, but it's interesting. I just showed the thermionic fabricator, by the way, on camera, and a bunch of my subscribers are probably just like, what's that? Yeah, and basically what I'm doing is like, this is my red power room, and this is my build craft and forestry room, and this is my IC2 room, and this is my nexus room, and nice. then this is my first room, doesn't really have a de designation. Oh, and my mine shaft's in the middle. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw it. Did you fall down my mine shaft? <laughs> oh, oh, that's a mine shaft there. Why do you have a linking book to it? Um. Well, originally I was gonna do a mining world, and I made it with caves, and I realized a mining world with caves is way too many mi caves. Like, if you go down <laughs> my mine shaft, it's like cave, 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 cave. You can't actually mine. Cool. Um, so I think I'm going to use that for like quarries and stuff. Oh, neat. Yeah, that makes sense. use this world since Please it doesn't have caves. Oh yeah, look at you and all the rubber trees you got going on. Yep. See, I don't have as much time to play as you guys, unfortunately, so I haven't been on as much. Oh, my hey guys. Almost. Yo, what's up, Iku? Hey, Iku. I like it, Flora. It looks good. All right, subs. What's the Thermion Fabricator? Um, I don't know yet. I know it's a new forestry item, as you can tell probably by the uh, 
little thingy here. It creates some of the new um, circuits and upgrades that Sengir is adding in forestry, but I honestly don't know it well enough and how it works, so I can't give you a serious explanation. But I will explain it, hopefully, as soon as I figure it out, and uh, we'll show it to you guys. Well, you know he changed the recipe them. for all the farms and stuff, right? He changed them? Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah. Basically, um, what you need to make all the farms now, you get from the thermionic fabricator. Oh, cool. It needs a lot of power, too, doesn't it, the Stormbringer? Like mm. four or five EU per tick? Not a super it, lot. Well, it, it needs uh, Minecraft jewels, for one, and it needs uh, one MG per tick to keep its temperature and two MG per tick, MJ per tick or more to heat up. Oh, okay. So pretty much like uh, maybe a two peat engine? Yeah. Two peat engines. One peat engine is, is one MG, J. Cool. Unless you're using that uh, other cool fun stuff. Yeah, the bituminous peat. Oh, I found some bad guys. I'm going to go mine a little bit off camera, YouTubers, and I will be back uh, when I find something interesting to show you guys. All right, guys, I'm heading into my refinery age here, the uh, overworld. Just going to drop some of the copper and iron I mined up. I didn't mine too much. I did get a few diamonds, which was nice. And I brought some resources here because, as you can see, I want to make a drill. I'm going to need five refined iron, an electronic circuit, and a rechargeable yeah, battery. Yeah, my place has changed quite a bit since you were last here at Dyrol. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I started prettyifying everything. <laughs> cool. I'll have to stop by for sure. Right now, I'm just getting ready to make some stuff. And recording a little bit. We gotta get faster extractors. It's killing me. Alright guys, so as you know, just craft as shown and you get yourself an electronic circuit and a battery. Showed you the recipe a moment ago. And then we can get ourselves the drill. The drill is a pretty nice tool, but the first thing I always use my diamonds on typically is the diamond tipped drill. Which means I no longer have to rely on pickaxes. Now I have a rechargeable drill that I can do whatever I want with. And speaking of rechargeable hey, drills, Lex, how's it let's going? charge it up. What's up Lex Manos? All right. I'm recording by the way, buddy. Hey. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, now, I probably want a bat pack as well. Battery pack. I'm going to need six rechargeable batteries. Dyer, I'm impressed that you can actually name this new machine. Well, not name it, but pronounce it properly. Which machine's that? What? The Thermionic Fabricator? Yeah, it's not so bad. I'm terrible at uh, pronouncing things. I know I'm terrible at pronouncing things. It's not that bad, though. I believe, uh, and you can ask Sengir this, that when the name was being tossed around, there was some discussion about how hard should we make it for Direwolf to say. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. Not at all. Well, gentlemen, now that I've had my birthday cake, I'm going to head on off. So I'll see you tomorrow. It's your birthday, Potmar? It is. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Let's see if we can get Flora to sing happy birthday again. Oh, she just left. Oh. That would have been awesome. For All right, Lex Manos is a substitution. Yes, Lex, sing for us. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, <laughs> now that you are, have your dick, where is my new Jew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to post this video. <laughs> Lex, I'll make a donation and the rough amount of a slice of cake for you, because apparently you can't ship things across the border like that. Ah, uh, damn customs. I swear they keep eating those cookies. 
All right, see you tomorrow, everyone. Later, buddy. Later. User disconnected from your channel. And what else I'm probably going to do, guys, is uh, I considered that I probably want to have um, a bunch of industrial craft stuff in my age, um, at least for now, so that I can basically have an auto sorting system because I always like to have my auto sorting systems especially on servers when I'm doing stuff like um, you know mining with uh, quarries and red power quarries and whatever else I decide to automatically mine with so I need an auto sorting system I was tossing around the idea do I want to have some kind of auto sorting in this age here but if I put my auto sorting system here it'll kind of conflict when other people want to use the macerators the rubber so thinking, going really slow yeah rubber always goes slow you want to use it I'm kind of done for now uh, no, I'm not really doing too much with IC2. Um, maybe later. I can always speed it up a little bit by borrowing the overclockers. Six of them ought to do. What I'm really working for is to get some letters so that I can trade my piece of tungsten I have for ender pearls. Oh, cool. So, what do I do? Just, like, mail stuff to people and then, uh... They'll, it'll, will it come back automatically, or is that something like somebody has to log in and do? No, you uh, make a letter, you switch it from player to trader, type in whatever it is that you want. Like if you want diamonds, you put tungsten diamond, and then you attach your tungsten to the letter, uh, put it in the mailbox, and supposedly you get back one with what you're trading for. Cool. I don't know, I haven't really done it yet, so... Yeah, neither have I ever um, run into any yeah. tungsten. Um, but you need propolis to make letters, and you need honey? I know I need honey for something. can't remember what. Oh, more bee products. My, uh, all the people will like that on my YouTube. Alright guys, I'll be right back. I need to just get my stuff situated, and then I'll head back to my age. I was heading back to my age, but I want to go visit Bot's World real quick and see what he's got going on. Oh, Hello. You. You're hiding under a little, like, cave, but a dirt cave. Yeah, the, uh, that's a stairway up to the surface. Oh, cool. Some trapdoors and stuff. I don't think I've ever yeah. crafted a trapdoor in my life. No? They're useful for a few different things. I know they are. I just don't think I've ever actually gotten around to making one, believe it or not. You've got a lot of wood. Ooh, circuit boards and copper electron tubes, huh? That's from the thermionic fabricator. I know that much. Yeah. Sweet. My farms are over this way. I guess that's your mine My down there. Mine, yeah. Yeah, we've, uh, oh, I'm looking at uh, the map all of a sudden. I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of snow and not snow. <laughs> checkerboard. Yep, yep, checkerboard, jungle, and tiaga. Nice. Tiga. Ooh, I like it. Peat fired engines, cool. Yeah, I am don't have a way to automatically make bogger, so this is basically a dirt farm right now because I harvested one crop's worth. Nice. Oh, and I see you have another one for uh, wheat. That's cool. Yeah, I haven't built any farms yet at all. Yeah, I, um, I had thought the wheat farm went up to 10 high, but apparently not because, um, you know, it's done covering out the ceiling that was as high as it went. I think he changed it one or two back, um, how high it went up, because he realized it, like, totally didn't need to be as high as it was. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, it looks like he just hasn't updated the wiki yet, so... Yeah, possibly. He's too busy Maybe. coding in thermionic fabricators and <laughs> candles. Oh, by the way, episode one, I got a ton of comments about the white torches. What are those white torches? And a lot of comments. Are you on 1.3? <laughs> Yeah, you must have picked one of those up because I don't think they actually crafted any legitly, I don't think. No, I think I picked one up when they were doing the Mistcraft Age there. Pretty cool. Alright, YouTubers, I'll be back. 
All right, guys, I'm ready to uh, start working on where I want to have my, uh, whatchamacallit, sorting room going in here. Uh, like I said, I decided to go with, um, I think I have to move this stuff over here, by the way. I'll probably move my sorting room off in this direction. This is probably the way I'm going to have to expand my house for the most part. Um, maybe off in this way, and maybe off some in that direction, too. Yeah, I've got plenty of room over there. All right, so I'm going to start building up my sorting room. Basically, I decided I need to have a pretty decent. Do you know with uh, um, all the bees that you did, if the only biome modus bees can survive in is the jungle? Which one? Which type of bee? Uh, modus bees, the ones that you get from. Uh, not jungle. Uh, desert. Desert. I think they should be able to survive in um, Nether. Yeah, I think Nether has the same humidity and temperature as the uh, desert. Yeah, that's not exactly any more convenient, though, to me. No. Well, you've got a desert age, don't you? Nah, mine Lots is desert. jungle in Tiega. <laughs> or I do have a desert. Yeah, a desert age. I may just write a thinking book and stick it in my world to go there. Cool. I've got a few ideas, by the way, on how I want to um, do some fun stuff in the server here. I'm recording too, by the way. I'm trying to decide how big I want my sorting room to be. If I want to have all my chests in the sorting room as well, it should be a pretty decent sized room, I think. Maybe I'll make it uh, 17 by 17 like I did the last room in the overworld. That might be cool. Yeah, that's a pretty decent size. That's what I did, right? 17 by 17? Yeah, because it was one short of 18 by 18. That ought to work. Alright guys, I'm going to come back in a few minutes once I've started building this room. You don't need to see me build stuff. I'll be back. Alright, mined up a ton of marble. Oh yeah gonna go do some uh, other building i want to build the uh sorting room with marble just like in the overworld hooray so i'm gonna start crafting that up and then uh see what's going on what you guys up to trying to find um i'm about to harvest uh glowstone what's the best weapon to use on that pickaxe correct Those of you who are new to watching my series of things, you should know that Vot Tog knows less about vanilla Minecraft than I do. Isn't that right, Tog? That is correct. And very <laughs> ironic since I work on the game. Dude, it's hilarious. But it's the best. To be fair, I haven't done, or most of the stuff was existing when I started working on it. Yeah, and you work on it more than you get to play it, so. That's what I find a lot of mod authors say, and I guess you're not a mod author, you're an actual author of Minecraft Vanilla, but it's hard to, like, play and code. Like, find time for both, basically. Yeah. how tall I want to make this room. How tall did I make this room? Alright guys, I'll be back once this room is more complete. Alright, just came over here because I had to recharge my drill and everything. <laughs> yeah. Doing a lot more mining for marble. I did get my uh, 17 by 17 mostly finished. I need to get a roof on there. But otherwise, going pretty well. Let's see, where's Dyer's Age? We have to improve this nexus, by the way, guys. <laughs> it's cool, but there needs to be more. Oh. 
I'm currently still uh, bricking up my entire base, which is a very long process. Oh, yeah. I think I have like 15 rooms or something already made. Yeah, I'm trying to make things look nice. Like, usually I just go with, like, cobble houses, but now because I'm actually playing on a server, it's like, alright, let's try and make things look a little half-decent. <laughs> Cobblestone everywhere is just not going to work on a server, right? Well, I made a, a, a plan to always mine in these 11x11 11 11 rooms, so every, like, mine shaft I have is just another 11x11 11 11 room. Cool. Oh yeah, I think I saw your world. It was rather interesting. I saw you weren't mining out all the ores in the walls. Oh yeah, I left that for my roommate, because he likes mining, so I just left it for him. Ah. Cool. Yeah, this doesn't look half bad. Yeah, I'm actually doing, like, just the opposite on the server, like, where normally I'd, you know, I'd typically build, like, a, um, a 15 by 15 basalt house, um, but here I'm going more organic underground. When I first started playing Minecraft, I did a lot of underground stuff. Like, I'd almost always start my house underground, like in a nice cave system or something. But not so much yeah. anymore. Now I almost go with the 9x9s. Nine Ugh, need more marble still. And uh, about 90% of these tunnels, I would say, was wood. Uh, the wooden tendrils, because they go... Um, Believe it or not, underground as much as they grow above ground. Oh, do they? That's cool. So you found a lot of wood underground while you were mining with the wooden tendrils world. Yeah, I basically hardly mined any cobblestone or dirt to start with. It was just, I saw one little wooden tendril at the surface and I just followed it down uh, nice. to where it would go. I think XCOM said he basically used, like, the Minecraft built-in cave generation code for his uh, wooden tendrils generation. And if you look at him, it kind of makes sense the way they look. Yeah, and I must have stumbled onto a fairly large one because this just goes all over the place. Yeah. Cool, this room's not looking half bad. I'm going to go get some marble and finish up the corners and then be back. Alright guys, and I'm grabbing my lapis blocks. Remember the Stormbringer gave me those? I want to put those and combine them with my backpack real quick. Thank you to Stormbringer. You the man. Might as well go charge it up. Every time I teleport into that Mistcraft uh, temple there, I hear what sounds like an IC2 generator going for like a second. It like stutters and then it's okay, I'm done. I'll be back, guys. Alright, guys. Looks like we have a pretty nice sorting room here. I like it. I don't even really need torches because this is an eternal day age, so I should never have any problem with mobs spawning in here. So I don't even have to worry about torches. That's kind of the thing I like about the eternal day age, by the way, guys, is that uh, one problem I have with Minecraft is, like, when you build a room much bigger than 9x9, which is kind of why I, another reason I went with 9x9 so much, it's hard to light it up without putting torches on the, on the floor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, is Later on, for like, you know, big projects, you can go with other things like red power lamps or glowstone or something like that. And that looks nicer on the floor, but you're right. Torches on the floor really, really just kind of gets in the way. Yeah, like, it's not like you can't walk over them, but they look ugly. All right, so let's figure out how we want to do our sorting system here. I could do this pretty similar to the one I did in Season 3. It's definitely going to be Red Power 2 related. Um, do 
I want two or three macerators. Two should be good. Maybe three macerators, just because I don't have the uh, advanced versions of them. Or even four. Hmm. I'm thinking... Probably want the auto cooking of everything happening in the back of the room. Yeah, so with the power, it's pretty easy to have as many as you want without too much of a logistics nightmare, right? What's that? The lights? Uh, no, the uh, like having multiple macerators or whatnot because you just extend the uh, tubes further. Oh yeah, it's great. I love it. So I'm kind of planning out the way I want to do my macerators right now. I'll have the tubing coming to the top there. That looks cool. Those will probably all have to be uh, pipes. I'm probably going to have to go with... Do I want a retriever or a transposer? I'm guessing transposers on front of each, maybe, or filters on the front of each. Like, a retriever is nice because it's compact, but it can only pull out of one machine at a time. So, like, if I have, uh, you know, stuff in all the machines... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. A retriever will probably do. I don't know, I'll figure it out as I go. Then I could have like two uh, induction furnaces there. Yeah, that'll look good. Yeah, that might be cool. Might even have uh, an extractor and maybe a compressor as well. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Cool. Then I'll have a chest. This will be my input chest area, probably. Uh, with filter and sorting machine and probably some tubing and some more sorting machines. Who knows what else. And then I'll probably want all my chests along this side of the wall. Like, probably starting here. That'll be plenty of chests, especially because we have crystal chests installed. I like crystal chests. It's such an awesome mod. Like, such a simple concept, but, like, awesome. Oh, by the way, I had a cool idea. Iku, tell me what you think of this, since you're on here. And I know you're, like, serious business about the uh, balance of your mod. Somebody suggested in... Maybe episode 75 of my single-player Let's Play. You ready for this, Iku? Yep, I'm here. Ender chest carts. Yeah, I've actually had it requested to have support for um, Railcraft. Your thoughts? Overpowered or no? I wouldn't say overpowered. I'd say... Um, it takes away from the idea of using the railcraft mechanics to fill a cart and then fill an ender chest. So you can already do the kind of thing with railcraft. So I find it kind of taking away from that aspect. I gotcha. That makes sense. This is my MFE, by the way. And I'm debating what kind of power source I want. If I want solar but coming I know, in or if I want to go watermelon. I have watermelon. a suggestion on the forum as well. So I, I, told, I mentioned there that... Uh, it, I'm not completely ruling it out, but right now, i kind of against it. Oh. That's cool. I mean, it makes sense. Like, uh, I agree. Like, it's easy for Ender Chests to go ahead and start taking away from functionality of other mods. Well, and I just like watching people, like, build the machines, you know? You have to build these machines for a reason. If you, if you can just have it all in one like cart then why build the machines right exactly like you don't need item unloaders and loaders anymore if you have an ender cart exactly it's real easy to nullify the purpose of a machine by making them more capable makes sense yeah why would why would you want to transport stuff anywhere if you had ender carts that could just you know just seems like two alternate forms of storage to me. True. Using them together seems rather odd. Definitely. That's 
That was weird. <laughs> I know with Redux, I already plan on uh, offering a new type of ender yeah. chest, basically, that will be nerfed a lot compared to the current one. Oh, wow. I don't have nearly enough resources to build anything anymore. <laughs> I used a lot of stuff on the overworld resources. I think I'm going to go mine for a bit, everybody. I'll be back. Hey, guys, look at this. I just found a mob spawner as I was uh, out exploring for resources. Hmm. Not much in there I could use. It's pretty the auditory. teleport tethers recipe is. Hey, I found a music disc and a fourth boot disc. A little disc. more expensive. <laughs> is that like your first music disc ever? I'm pretty sure it is. I was just saying the other day I've never, ever found a music disc inside anywhere, ever. I decide I want those bones, but I can get rid of some cobble. Probably have enough of that stuff. Maybe that's because there's less mods. No, I, well, I don't know. Because, um, they have, a, since every item that's added to a chance, it, a chest has a random chance of going in any slot. Even one yeah. that has already had an item in there. So if you have Thomcraft, for example, on there, that would uh, potentially overwrite a lot of vanilla generated items in Dungeon Jest. Right. Yeah, no, that I know. But Thomcraft is one of the few, I think, that adds it. And maybe Portal Gun? No, I don't think they do either, do they? Uh, Railcraft adds items. I think you can find like crowbars and stuff in there. Yeah. And uh, Red Power adds boot discs. Yeah, but that's all new. Like, uh, you know, I didn't have Railcraft for a while, and Red Power only just started adding the boot discs. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised though. Before Thumbcraft, um, you wouldn't have found one. Um, maybe, no, that's right, they didn't always used to spawn in dungeons. It used to be like the only way you could get it was if a skeleton shot a creeper or some crazy thing like that, right? I think a zombie. Uh, a skeleton shooting a zombie? Something maybe like that. that. I don't know it was a skeleton shooting something. It's a creeper. Was it the creeper? Yeah. I thought zombies could drop them too for some reason. And this is me in my cave, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not putting torches in as I mine, and then, like, I go back through my cave, and there's mobs everywhere. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. It's not bright down here, and mobs can spawn. Hooray, creepers. And skeletons. Do you not always get a drone from a beehive? You should. You should always get at least one. Unless the server's set up to do it, like, hardcore mode. But even then, I think it's at least one. Hmm. Because I got four princesses and three drones. I don't know how many beehives I broke. I'm putting the dirt block here to remember that this path leads to the zombie spawner. I might want to utilize that zombie spawner at some point. How am I going to move a zombie spawner without portal gun, you ask? Hmm. I wonder what items that I have can move blocks around in the game for me. I wonder. I wonder. Dude, on LOM server, when we were testing Red Power uh, pre-release 5 before it came out, it was crazy, dude. They moved, like, a mob spawner, like, halfway across the world. It was literally, like, hundreds of blocks using frames. Wait, did you use an inchworm drop? Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly how I did it. I uh, forget who it was that did it. Uh, it wasn't LRM. It was somebody else who was helping this test. Uh, but I don't think he used an inchworm drive. I think they used like, just like a regular old frame machine.
Yeah, you basically have an inchworm drive for movement, or you can have like, uh, um, what is it, like the one that you move your arm back and forth with. Is it back and forth? No, you ended up making that just constant, right? But up and down, you had it automatically add frames and remove frames. Yeah, left and right, I had the arm, and up and down, I had the uh, deployer. I could have done that for left and right, too, the deployer thing, but I didn't want to uh, complicate it too much more than it needed to be. Frankly, I didn't even really need the... Uh, I didn't even need the arm. Like, I could have just had, like, the whole platform move left and right and up and down and just mine like that, but it would have been slower. Hello. Hey, Flora. Hello. We wanted you to sing before, and you weren't here, and then everybody got sad. See what I'm you sorry. did? It's all your fault. Why Why did everyone want me to sing? Because it's Pahamar's birthday. Oh, I thanked him earlier. Yeah, but, like, I wasn't recording. Oh. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, I'm not singing. Sung on camera before. Have you not seen my sister and I's Let's Play? I have. What level did you find Lapis at? Um, it was right around 10. So I definitely found it in a Mistcraft age. We were wondering a few minutes ago if Mistcraft ages could find Lapis, because we just, nobody had found any in a Mistcraft age yet. And then I found some, so yes, again. Yeah, I have lapis in my mind. My mind's uh, at the floor of my mind's at nine, so. Sweet. I'm gonna macerate some ores and then be back, guys. Now, you know what I wanted to test is that F9 thing too. Uh, yoink. Yeah, the uh, water mill is chunk loaded, by the way, to Stormbringer. So that's cool. We're good. I keep thinking this tin is iron. Normally, it's bet tend to have a more silvery thing feel, but the forest region has a brownish look. Looks almost like iron, in my opinion. Oh, you know, no, I like it because uh, in Red Power 2 and in Industrial Craft, it looks so much like silver, it's hard to tell the two apart unless you really are paying attention, but forestry looks uh, different enough from silver. Agreed. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what this thing is. This is a hopper, another new item from Forestry. I don't know exactly how it works. It's, it's not something... from Forestry. It's... Oh, it's from Buildcraft? Yep. Oh, cool. Yep. Oh, that's right. Craft did it, didn't he? Yeah, it doesn't seem to work all that well with the carpenter, though. It's kind of like you drop items into it, and then they go into the machine. Yeah, but they land in the crate slot, so it doesn't work all that well. Oh, right. Okay. Because, yeah, the top of the carpenter is the crate slot. Got it. I'll be back, guys. Oh, you know what? Looks like I'm just about the, wow, 38-minute mark, so definitely a long episode. So I think it's time to sign off. So this has been episode 6 of Direwolf 20's server play series. Uh, having a good time. Next episode I'll be back. I'm going to use all the resources that I just collected here um, to go ahead and start making the macerators and induction furnaces that I'll be using uh, in my world where I'm going to have my uh, auto mining system going. So this room that I built right now was just a shared resource room for everyone to use on the server. But uh, the one that I'll be building in my world, well, like, I won't mind if people use it, but... As long as they don't mind their items getting auto-sorted into my chests. <laughs> Alright, everybody. Take it easy.